Here's a seventh conjecture. f of n is claimed to be theta of f of n by 2. Now, is this conjecture valid or is it not valid? You need to prove or disprove this conjecture. So let's write down what the definition of theta notation is so that it provides a starting point for us to explore this conjecture. If f of n is theta of f of n by 2, then by the definition of theta notation, there should exist two positive constants c1 and c2 such that for all n larger than some threshold n0, f of n needs to be sandwiched between two constant multiples of f of n by 2. Another way to write this is, if we divide, if, if we divide by f of n by 2 throughout, we get the ratio of f of n to f of n by 2 needs to be greater than or equal to c1 and less than or equal to c2. Since c1 and c2 are positive constants, this is basically constraining the ratio of f of n and f of n by 2 to be some positive constant. And to always lie between two constants c1 and c2. So if c1 is, so let's say this is the number line, if c1 is somewhere over here and c2 is somewhere over here, then the ratio of f, f of n and f of n by 2 must always remain in this range. It should never cross this range on either side. Now we don't know what c1 and c2 are, but we do know that there exist two constants c1 and c2 such that this must hold if the conjecture is valid. Now it, let's go over some of the functions that we have looked at to see if this these two inequalities hold for a variety of functions. So let's say f of n is equal to n. In that case f of n by 2 will be equal to n by 2 and f of n divided by n by 2 will be simply n divided by n by 2 which will be 2. So this is not a problem if f of n is equal to n because the ratio of f of n and f of n by 2 is a fixed constant 2. So it is sandwiched between two constants c1 and c2. I could take c1 to be 1, c2 to be 3 and I'm guaranteed that this will hold for all values of n larger than you know some, some threshold we choose. In fact, it's going to be true for um, for all values of n uh, greater than or equal to 2. But, you know, n naught is up to us, so we can choose whatever convenient threshold we would like for the function in question. What about f of n equal to n square? If f of n is n square, this is going to be n square divided by n square by 4 and so this is going to be 4. So again c1 and c2 can be chosen to be somewhere around 4. c1 should to be less than 4 but obviously greater than 0 and c2 to be some number greater than 4.
are there any functions for which the ratio of f of n to f of n by 2 cannot be constrained to lie between two constants? Is it possible that as n increases, the ratio of f of n and f of n by 2 also goes on increasing or arbitrarily approaching 0? Let's, let's consider, uh, let's say that the ratio of f of n by f of n by 2 is increasing. Is that possible? Well, it, well, if we look at some exponential function, let's say f of n is 2 to the power n, what would be the ratio of f of n to f of n by 2 here? This would be 2 to the power n divided by 2 to the power n by 2. This can be simplified to 2 to the power n divided by the square root of 2, 2 to the power n. So 2 to the power, this is basically 2 to the power half and the whole thing to the power n. So this is 2 to the power n divided by the square root of 2 to the power n. And if we group together the numerator and the denominator, the base in the numerator and in the denominator, because the powers are the same, we get the ratio to be square root of 2 to the power n. Now as you can see here, unlike the examples, the two examples that we saw here, the ratio of f of n and f of n by 2 is not a constant. It depends on n. So, if the value of n, imagine what happens if the value of n goes on increasing from some finite positive number all the way up to, all the way up towards positive infinity. As the value of n increases, the value of this ratio is also going to go on increasing. For example, when n is equal to 10, the ratio of f of n to f of n by 2 is going to be square root of 2 to the power 10 or 2 to the power 5, which is 32. But if we take n to be say 14, then the ratio is going to be the square root of 2 to the power 14, which is 2 to the power 7, which is 128. So you can see that as the, the value of n increases, the value of the ratio of these two is also going to increase. In fact, you can see that no matter what, where we fix this, the boundary of C2, the value of this ratio for large enough n is eventually going to be larger than any constant C2 we may fix. For that reason, we claim that if you take an exponential function like this, it is not possible to bound the value of this ratio f of n to f of n by 2 between two fixed constants because the value of the ratio itself depends on n. And so as n goes up, the ratio will also go up in an unbounded way. So if f of n had to be theta of f of n by 2, this must have been true. This should have been true, or in other words, this should have been true. But it's not true for functions like this. For functions like this, if I put 2 to the power n here, 2 to the power n is not theta of square root of 2 to the power n. But if I put 2 to the power n by 2 here, that's just square root of 2 to the power n. 
and you know it's that's clear from the fact that the base of the power is different here and so 2 to the power n is going to grow at a much larger rate than square root of 2 to the power n they don't have the same rate of growth so that is something we have proven formally here by showing that f of n equals 2 to the power n is a counter example to this claim because the ratio of f of n by f of n by 2 is unbounded and so this claim has been disproven. <laughs>